So I want to talk about Rough. New Hampshire, you know, because again, I, I, I just, you know, over the last couple of weeks, there's been a lot of fear and loathing, uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, sackcloth and action, uh, ashes action, for Donald Trump that lost half of the Iowa electorate, despite the fact he's basically the incumbent president. I would say if Obama ran as a Democrat in that contest, uh, a, a Democratic. Uh, caucus, he'd get 98% of the vote. Only 14% of the vote went out in Iowa then. Uh, a very low turnout. Now you look at Donald Trump here. You've been going to the rallies. You've been going, uh, you've been seeing all of this. You and I both were at that massive event in uh, 2016, over 4,000 people in a raging snowstorm. Um, Talk about how, again, we're looking at all the crazy, dangerous things he's saying, disconnected from reality. But, but, but compare Trump 2016 with Trump 24, and also compare what Donald Trump has done to the state of New Hampshire in general election uh, it, uh, terms. Yeah, I mean, look, Joe, you, you mentioned that, that event. Uh, I, was, I was thinking about you on Saturday night because... That's the SNHU arena right across the street from where I am now. That's a big, a big sports arena. They do hockey games and, and basketball games there and stuff. Four years ago, we were all there together. You, me, Willie Barnacle, we're all out there. It was, it was a huge snowstorm. And that place, which seats 10,000 people, was packed to the gills uh, in, in, in 2016. The other night here, uh, there were empty seats all over the arena. I, I, you know, they said there were a few thousand people there, and, and I probably were a few thousand, but that place seats 10,000, and it was way less than half filled. And there were, even on the lower level, you could see just seats after seat after seat with no one in it. Last night, you know, he did an event on Sunday night in Rochester. The place has a capacity of 700. And you remember how Trump, I mean, he filled 700 seats, but you know Trump used to brag about his you know 10,000 people, 12,000 people. We kept 10,000 people outside as far as the eye can see. You know, they're, they're, he's, getting, he's getting more people to turn out than, than Nikki Haley, but the phenomenon, the energy of Donald Trump uh, that you saw on the ground here, that we saw on the ground here in 2016, to a lesser extent in 2020, partly because of, of the pandemic, it's just, it's ebbed a great deal in this primary. And I will say, you know, as you talk to political, uh, people who really know the state uh, here, whether they're pollsters or strategists or whatever, you know, back in 2016, remember Donald Trump ran against Hillary Clinton in this state and they were within less than a percentage point separated them on election day in 2016. It's 27 point something percent for Hillary, 27 point something a little less for, for Donald Trump, but like less than half a percent. You know, Biden won this state by seven points in 2020. And there's polling out there that says that Biden wins this state by 10 points uh, in 2024. This is a state that has not been transformed by Trump from purple to red, this is a state that under Trump's leadership in the Republican Party is the, one of the best examples of the thing you guys, we talk about all the time, which is that Trump has been toxic mm -hmm. politically at the national level for the Republican Party. This state would under, for a normal Republican, uh, be a, a, a battleground state potentially. Instead, here we are looking at a state that, that by reasonable, uh, the reasonable metrics we're looking at, he'll probably lose this state. Again, if we're sitting here today by potentially double digits, high single digits, that puts the state out of reach for Republicans. And, and yet, you know, it's yeah. still the case that there's almost no doubt that he's going to end up uh, being able to hold off Nikki Haley here uh, because of that, that core, small but intense core of the Republican Party who's definitely going to show up for him, even if turnout is down on Tuesday. Yeah, it's going to be well, so interesting to see. Yeah, let's keep it, I mean, let's keep this simple, Caddy. If Nikki Haley were the nominee, New Hampshire would be a swing state. Since Donald Trump is going to be a nominee, Democrats mm -hmm. aren't going to have to spend a dime there. Put it in the blue column. It's done. Yeah, and that lack of enthusiasm, the smaller crowds, the lack of energy, how many other states is that going to translate to? I mean, you know, there... I don't like to use the word confidence when it comes to the White House, but you combine the kind of lack of broader energy for Trump in the Republican Party with those better economic numbers that they're seeing, the consumer confidence numbers ticking up. That was perhaps the most important number we had out last week, showing that actually Americans are starting to feel better about the economy. And, you know, they you can understand why the White House is just desperate to get on with this race.